Hey, Amplify You family, Michelle Abraham here, and I am super excited to have another amazing episode with you today. And today I brought on a really special guest. Her name is Roxanne Wilson. I was on her podcast a few weeks ago, and it was amazing. So she's got a podcast called Rox Talks. I love it. And uh, Roxanne is an expert at social media. So she's really helping um, network marketers really hone in on their social media skills, which we've all been a to a approached by network marketers on social media that was probably the wrong way. So she teaches them to do it the right way, <laughs> and which is really awesome. And not only that, but Roxanne is a television host, radio personality, fitness professional, an attorney, author, social media consultant, wedding planner, well traveled speaker. Uh, what else have you not done? That's a lot of things on your list there. <laughs> and not only that, but she was on season five of NBC's The Apprentice, which is amazing. So, uh, Roxanne, you and all your amazing skills, <laughs> welcome to our show today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. I really appreciate it. And it's exciting to talk to you some more because you are amazing. Oh, thank you. That's so awesome. Yeah, we had a great interview on your show. I really enjoyed talking about podcasting to your audience. And uh, yeah, and I'm super excited to bring you on our show. So now you're, you know, there's lots of social media. I think you probably, you do it all as a social media consultant, but what you're narrowing down on really is Instagram right now. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes, that is right. Absolutely. Awesome. So we're going to do two sides of this interview because I want to dig into the Instagram for podcasters. Like what can we do to like help our shows on Instagram over there and uh, help me please because I'm so bad at Instagram. <laughs> 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 Luckily we have Erin on our team is a lot better than I. She's been managing our Instagram. She's awesome. And, uh, and then I want to talk about your podcast and like what's going on with your podcast. So let's start with the podcast. What's okay. it called? How, how long have you had it for? Okay, so the podcast is called Rocks Talks. Now, when you ask me how long I've had it, that's a really good question mm -hmm. because I came from a background of doing radio and television. Mm -hmm. And so for the longest time, I'm like, I should do a podcast or people are saying, I should do, you should do a podcast. So t if I'm being really honest with you, I've had the podcast for like four years maybe, but it's like I would do a bunch of episodes and then I'd get bored and then put it down for like six months and then do some episodes and then put it down. So in this latest iteration, which I'm super excited about, it is, um, I've, I relaunched it in November. Nice. And so, so I'm going to say November, but honestly, Rocks Talks, the concept of Rocks Talks has been around for a few years. I can relate to that because it took me forever to get a freaking podcast out there. <laughs> and I had like five of them going on and then like launched one and then no, and then no, that wasn't the right one. It's yeah. like, you know, you got to be passionate about it. I was just speaking about that with another client of mine. It's like, you have to really, uh, in order not to pod fade after a few episodes, mm -hmm. you need to have like the right mix of like your experience, your education, your interest, your passion to keep going with it. Right. And exactly. I think casting a little bit wider of a net of like say social media for network marketers rather than just Instagram, I think was smart. Right. And that's probably what's kept you fueled. Am I right? It is. I think it's vision. I, you know, you listed off the things I've done as well too. So I think as I was doing different things okay. as well, I'm finding you, you, everything in life prepares you for something you do in the future. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like really laser focused on who I'm meant to help and serve. And so it makes it very easy to do a podcast because I know my mission. Mm -hmm. As before, I'm like, well, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. I know this great person. And that's all fine and well, but unless you're Ellen, people really don't want to hear you talking about a million different things. Right. I was the same with me from podcasting. I finally realized is podcasting or like talking about it made it a lot easier right mm -hmm. so what sure. made you decide on network marketers as your as your like audience that's a great question um when i left television and the, my latest iteration of television was home shopping so i was doing home shopping 24 7 wow. for five years <laughs> yeah i i stumbled on to network marketing which i thought i would never do but i'm like oh, okay sure i'll try it and i while i enjoyed it and the people there were a lot of things that i saw that were just not right business-wise. You kind of tapped into it in my intro. It's like the wrong way to approach people um, and yeah. the way that this doesn't feel right. And people were trans transferring that onto social media. Mm -hmm. And so after I got past the, okay, be coachable and do whatever they say, I'm like, wait a moment, I've got a business degree. I have business acumen. How would I do this? And I love social media. And so it started working for me doing, doing the best practices that I knew. I started training other people on it. Um, in the company and then other people were in the company. And so I thought, let me start my own business doing this because I'm more passionate about helping people do this mm -hmm. than actually doing network marketing itself. Um, and so with that, it, it, that's what I wanted to talk about on my podcast was like, mm -hmm. I want to help more people than just my actual clients. And so here we are. I love it. And so 
you went from talking about all types of social media and and you still talk about all types of social media mm -hmm. and on on your podcast but in your business now what are you doing so in my business i help well just like the podcast i help network marketers grow their business specifically on instagram um but i'm really transparent about about it you know when i started my business I was trying to help network marketers on Instagram and I created a course and nobody but my mom bought it. My sweet mom, mm. the one who ate my cookies when they had like eggshells in them when I was little. Right. She bought it. No yeah, one else so did. Yeah, moms are so great. It's about everything. <laughs> no one else will. Exactly. <laughs> my parents no. had so many network marketing company products because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. when right. I was in network marketing. Good old mom. So here's <laughs> the thing though. Um, what I did then was I started, I did a five-day Instagram stories challenge and mm. I had over 100 people just word of mouth sign up for it. And that's where I had this light bulb of reminding in just in business in general, people think they didn't want to, didn't want to take the Instagram course because they thought, oh, I know Instagram is what I do on Facebook. I just do whatever. But stories was so different that they're like, I need help with that. And so I started helping what they, them with what they needed, which then birthed my membership program where I actually give them storyboards every single day mm -hmm. for their stories, which helps them not just talk about their product, product, product. But as they, as that no like and trust, trust factor ha came up to be, and even during the challenge, I started trickling in things like, okay, so now that you got the stories right, what does your Instagram page look like? Does it look like your company vomited all over your page? Okay, let's talk about that. And so then they suddenly wanted that course that I mm -hmm. had that was just sitting there. And I was able to talk to them about just the Instagram sales journey in general and how to work people through funnels. And I'm very transparent and I tell them, listen, I'm here to help you get it right on Instagram because that's where most of your target market either is or they will be. They're coming there or they're already mm -hmm. there. But once you get this down on Instagram, you can take this on any social media platform and, and go forth and prosper. So I use Instagram as the vehicle. Awesome. And then like you're coaching them on building a personal brand. Is that what you're doing? Yes. Yeah. So target market and brand <laughs> is where I start <laughs> yeah. because most no marketers go in and they're told your, your clientele is anyone with skin or anyone who breathes. And that's not an actual target market as you and I both know. And so it's getting them to start thinking, I call it like a CEO and not a glorified salesperson nice. and then working on their brand. Your brand is not your company. You are a unique, distinct brand. And that's why people want to shop with you. Not because of the product. So it's, it's a lot of really reworking of what everything they were taught and they learned <laughs> and working through that step by step. Yeah. And it's interesting. You mentioned something about your membership site, because what you're doing in your membership site is you're, te you're training them on something on the front end, but then you're delivering something that's like a done for you thing on the back end. And yes. I know in my business, that's been really successful. Like the done for you stuff is very like popular. And I've noticed myself buying some more done for you stuff recently. Like whether that was like a done for you Trello board or like done for you mm -hmm. emails or whatever it was. But so uh, walk us through like what that looks like. What is your, what is the done for you storyboard look like? That's a really good question. And I love how you, you pose that because you're right, done for you. People want that more and more, or that's where they come in and then they realize they want more training. Mm -hmm. um, so my done for you is I create pro storyboards is what I call them. They're basically prompts um, that give them, uh, I love dirty dancing. So so, you know, like Johnny and baby are dancing and he's like, whoa, spaghetti arms, you know what I mean? It's like, this is my dance space. This is your dance space. So the storyboard is a dance space. So they know exactly the framework, kind of like, almost like Mad Libs of um, where they're, you know, step by step, the different pages of their story for that day. Then they're able to come in and either do it via video or do it with images, add gifts. I, in, I show them and t teach them how to add all of the um, interac interactive stickers because those are so important and that's how you learn about your target market and they like to be engaged. Mm -hmm. And so I, they get those from me. I send out an email every single day, which people are like, you do that daily? I do. It's every single day I send it out. So they have a new um, storyboard. Wow, that's interesting. And so the story was so, so, so literally on Instagram, but the story word is the one that goes into the stories and it's like what it's like kind of like a storyboard would be like if I was to do a story, um, it would be like kind of like the what I need to follow to tell people or it's like, is it like the design on the screen? Good question. So the storyboard <laughs> is like what you'd tell people. So for example, like um, <laughs> For example, yes, the, a couple days ago was um, Find a Rainbow Day. So the storyboard was like the first page would be like, did you know today was Find a Rainbow Day? Um, and then the next 
part would would have been something like I'm trying to remember. It was like even though we're inside of we're inside our homes, right? Wow. What's a rainbow? Or actually, it talked about the definition of a rainbow. A rainbow is a promise that it's not always going to be like this, right? right? And so that was one of the story, the, the the prompts. And then it was like, what's a rainbow that you found in your life recently wow. that reminds you we're going to get out of this? And then they ask the question, then they give an example, and they ask the question again. And that brought a lot of people saying, oh my goodness, you know, I saw this, or my child did that, my child started walking, or whatever it may be that reminded me that we're not going to be stuck in our homes. Uh, yeah, I love that. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, those prompts are like it's so great because <laughs> we have to constantly come up with the content on our own. It's a little bit tricky. Exactly. And I know- yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you know, you're, you're dead on, Michelle. And that's when, like, when you have to come up with content, that's when people start posting things like, this is the coffee I drank today. This is the, you know, and I'm like, you're not J-Lo. I mean, if J- people want to know what J-Lo wore today, they don't want to know what I wore today. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they might, when you're on the celebrity apprenticeship program, maybe that, they did. <laughs> they did want to know what you were wearing today. Yeah, right? not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How was that experience for you, by the way? I love it. It was. Out. Amazing. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, I thought it was a rare thing to get fired by President Trump. It's not anymore. But back then, (laughs) there were only a few of us that could say that happened. And I I just working with with Fortune 100 companies, um, the whole experience living in Trump, it was awesome. I wouldn't change it for a second. And you were on season five and you got to the final four, right? I did. I did. Yep. And then I got fired. Congrats. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's very cool. Uh, and that was a few years before Donald Trump became the president of the United States. That was like a decade before he became wow. president. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in my 20s mm-hmm. and I am now 41. So <laughs> <laughs> time flies. Yeah, exactly. Time flies, doesn't it? Um, I love that. That's really cool. And that's neat to be able to say that you were on that. I think that's pretty cool. And so were you a practicing attorney when you were on that? Or you were? What, I was. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah, I was a lawyer back in my lawyer days. Nice. And now you've written a book about it too. I did. <laughs> yes. That's cool. I love it. So, um, and that was all about your experience on the show and like what, and then what, tell us a little bit about the book. I'd love to know more. Yeah, the book is called, um, uh, gosh, it's been so long. The, it, it's Prayers in the Boardroom. And it's about like, I really got through that with, I kept a journal of my prayers and thoughts and all the things. And that's what got me through that time. Mm-hmm. I walked in there as a lawyer for, I was like a baby lawyer and I was around people who were, had like five companies and they were millionaires. And I thought, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> so I just said, okay, Roxanne, you got to be yourself. Um, you've got to just have some faith because you don't, I mean, it's, it's a whirlwind. It must be intimidating, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and so uh, the book just kind of gives, it, it, not kind of, but it gives um, a little insight into the experience as well as how faith got me through it and just how faith really can work in the business world. Mm, awesome. That's really cool. And so is it on Amazon or something if people want to take a look it at it? It is still on Amazon, yeah. I okay, think. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think so. someone bring it up back. Me. I'm bringing up all your pasta. <laughs> I know. Someone recently was like, I bought your book on Amazon. I'm like, you did? It's still on there? What? <laughs> so you can find Roxanne's book. Buy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love it. But if we want are interested in about the stories, how do we find out more yes. about that? That program sounds really cool. Absolutely. You can go to www.socialstories.com and there you find out all about the membership, even the five-day Instagram stories challenge. It's, um, I've had, gosh, over a thousand network marketers go through it now and it's available that people can just start doing on demand now because a lot of people have time on their hands and they want to jump in and dive into it. So that's there and then my other services are there as well too. And if you are not a network marketer, uh, but you're interested in Instagram stories, will that still work for us? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I have, I say a thousand network marketers, but some of those are just our business people who are like, you know what, I need to learn stories. Yeah. And what we don't realize on either side is that network marketers think that they're like a special duck and um, online business entrepreneurs think that network marketers aren't the same thing. And it's like, we are, it's, a, it's a microcosm. We all have the it, same so. product. We all have a product and service and we all need to brand ourselves. Amen. And down to the said. end of the day is we're doing the same thing. Just someone else made the product, not you. That's exactly. All. <laughs> yeah, really. And they have a huge network too of people that uh, support them too, whereas sometimes entrepreneurs are out there doing the solo thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But we all definitely need help with our social media. And so for um, pivoting to like our podcast audience, what could be some things that we could like really help us boost up our Instagram following? 
Like that's a great have, question. Yeah, yeah we have yeah, no, that's, that's a, some more Instagram followers for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's what I would say is this. Um, let's start from the, you said get more Instagram followers or more podcast listeners? Uh, well, I'd like both. <laughs> <laughs> we can start one or the other. <laughs> the obvious is like on your, on your podcast, lead people to your Instagram. Um, one yeah. way of doing that is saying, hey, you know, I'd love to, to, to get to know you on Instagram or if you have a comment about if you have a, a takeaway at, you know, go ahead and put it in your story. You know, do the whole like a screenshot, the episode and, and share it. And some people use like incentives for that as well too. That's kind of the, what you can do on a regular podcast episode to get people onto your Instagram or just like, we forget the power of product placement and you can do that on a podcast as well too. Mm -hmm. So in discussion, just saying, you know, I was on my Instagram rocks talks the other day and even that, and you're ta part of a story you might be telling, tells people, Oh, she's on Instagram. I want to see that. Or pointing out something you did see on Instagram makes yeah. people go, Oh, she's on there. And it's that natural. It's almost like when you see that Rolex watch on a, on a movie and you're like, that watch was awesome. And you don't realize Rolex, Rolex actually paid to have their watch in that movie. So you could say it's awesome and want to buy it. So that right. works very well. And I love what you just said too. Like, so I just want to reiterate this point. It's that like it was in a story or it was like you were talking about something and you just put it in the story. So it wasn't like, and by the way, go to Rock Stocks on Instagram. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, it would happen to be something involving in the story, which I like that too, right? Because then it seems really natural. I mean, we've seen a lot of podcasters now that are like doing the commercial in the middle of their show, which mm -hmm. is very obvious that they're doing a commercial in the middle of the show, which is fine. There's no problem with that. I mean, it's still more powerful as a voice, or voice like their own host voice with a product than, you know, it being like an interrupted, like actual like radio kind of commercial. Um, right. But I love it more intertwined into a story. I think that sounds, I think feels better to me. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's trying, like you said, trying different things and maybe trying all of them and seeing what works better for you. But if you're like, I want to get more people from my podcast to my Instagram, mm -hmm. then I would definitely use all those techniques. Um, another thing you can definitely do is reward people for it. And I don't mean monetarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, um, if you are looking on, say, um, uh, I don't even know what to call it anymore. Apple, what do I call it? iTunes? What can I call it? <laughs> yeah. Apple Podcasts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you see someone commented and you, and, or they gave you a review, screenshot that review mm -hmm. and, and share it on your podcast. But then go ahead and say, if you want to see it, I actually posted it in my stories or in my highlights. You can view yeah, the pod, good. you can view it there. And so you're rewarding people for it. Yeah. And, they're, and it's actually leading people to go look and read it on Instagram. So just ways to, but you have to be intentional about it. I find that if I, even myself, mm -hmm. if I don't remember, I'm like, I just did three episodes and I didn't even talk about my Instagram. What the heck? Yeah. So you have to really like plan out what you're going to say or how you're going to do it for that particular episode and make sure, put it on your checklist, make sure you've done it. Right. And maybe not just at the end of the call to action where it's like, you know, in, sometimes now it's probably more valuable to say, go follow us on Instagram rather than like, go like and review my show. Yeah, right? I know. It's probably that's more true. valuable to get them on Instagram because you have a follower and then they're there all the time other than just a one time review, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I love, I like that idea as well. Mm -hmm. um, so what, anything else? Okay, so now if we, so that was great if we want to get our listeners over to our Instagram. Now, if we want to grow our Instagram account, Mm -hmm. um, and another question. So two questions here. One question, if you want to grow our Instagram account, great. Secondly, if we have, um, like for us on, on Amplify You, we have the Amplify You.ca um, uh, Instagram account, which we had to put .ca in there. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird handle. So it's Amplify You at dot, dot, dot .ca. So it's mm -hmm. Amplify You.ca. And then I have my own personal um, Instagram account. So mm -hmm. is that recommended or is it better to have like your show and your personal account, the same, same sort of thing, a business account? How does that I'm happen? a big believer of bringing it all together. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there are a few reasons. A, just on a personal reason, it's less for you to manage. Managing multiple Instagram accounts or any account, multiple on any platform is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't think you need it because B, people never, nobody likes a flat Stanley is what I always say. Like <laughs> they don't want to just be podcast, podcast, podcast. So if you can show the 360 view of yourself and show you with your family, okay. show you in different ways, then they feel like they really know you, that no like and trust factor goes up 
um, and, and exponentially. It's a little different for you because I know, I mean, there's more than one person behind Amplify You, so that might be a little bit of a challenge, but it also may be great because you can show the different personalities, and if you guys are sharing that, it can, you can it can alleviate having to do your separate account. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we're, we're missing, right? We're showcasing other shows, we're doing clips of our shows, we're not doing the stories as much. And here's always something like, send me some content from your phone. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, my iPhone 5 is full. <laughs> time to update my phone. Time to, <laughs> to get rid of some photos. On there. That's a story right there that people yeah. can relate with. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't even have time to empty my phone. <laughs> yeah. So maybe now so, that we're in lockdown, I might be able to do that. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot. And like I said, that's the story. What are you working on right now that you've been putting off forever, but you have no excuse? Because you're locked down at home yeah, and then I you say for, you ask that question and you say for me it's I have the iPhone 5 okay I'm not gonna do an iPhone right now but I can get rid of some of these images um can you relate and I'm sure there are other people out there like I have the iPhone 5 or 7 or whatever yeah. well. <laughs> some ancient one and some the, reason ancient I have, one. the reason I have it is because I drop it all the time and it actually doesn't crack the screen where it's the iPhone 6 the second you drop it it smashes uh, well <laughs> you know there's something there's an 11 now you can go from the 5 like past the 6 if you want <laughs> my husband got tired of like fixing this iPhone 6 screen so it's like back to the 5 you go <laughs> you were demoted <laughs> yeah exactly you know you're juggling kids and groceries and yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah you. that's no. a great idea I love that so Okay, so stories and um, how do you come up with the content for your membership site? Like that's like, I think people struggle with content. So where do you get your information? Yes. So start, content is a struggle. For me, I, because I did network marketing, I know what they're thinking. I know what mm. they want to do. Like they want to touch that button of sell, sell, sell. And I'm like, mm. don't resist temptation. But I really like to encourage them to use attraction marketing. And I really think it's, like I said, everything you do in life prepares you for what you've done in the past, for you're doing in the future. And so I think based on my experiences, I have an acute understanding of what the consumer on social media wants mm. and what's interesting to them. And so it, I find it like a joy to create those yeah. stories for, um, for my members. To answer your question though, about how to get more followers on Instagram, yeah. the number one place on all social media to get all social media platforms right now to earn, to gain business, which is gaining followers as part of that is on Instagram stories. And that's one of the reasons it's mm. so very important. Um, so stories are what they sound like. It's telling a story. Most people do what I call spaghetti posting, just throwing things on a wall. Here's what I ate. Here's what I did. And they don't actually take the time to tell a story. Yeah. So my first suggestion is when you're telling a story, make sure you have a beginning, middle, and end. If there's not a beginning, and middle, and end to it, then it's not a story. And so that may be why you're not getting engagement or you're not getting more followers from it. Okay. That, that would be the first thing. The second thing is um, use, Instagram wants relationships. They want interaction. And so they've actually created ways for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And one of the main ways they, they are the stickers, what I call the sticker feature. So if you're on your Instagram stories and you see the little like smiley face, it's like a square, but it looks like there's a part of it is raised up like a sticker. When you click on there, that's where you find all your gifts, you find your images, but you also find stickers that Instagram has created to help with interaction. Uh -huh. The main ones, and I say it you, in whenever you do a story, and I have an Instagram stories checklist that goes through these that you should make sure that you're using throughout your story are the um, poll feature. There's a question feature, quiz, and then um, a slider. These are all okay. features that ask, they're basically asking people questions. And you know, we are humans. We love to give our opinions. So if you're asking me, I'm going to keep reading and watching. And so, um, not only is it great because it tells you tells me the consumer the the target your target market that you care mm -hmm. and you want to know, but it's also great because then you get some information about yeah. your the person yeah. watching. It's like doing market research, that's great. Exactly. That. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, it's phenomenal so, in that way. Another silly question. <laughs> okay, so the stories that I'm seeing on Facebook are they the same as Instagram or the, like I was that is not a, <laughs> that is not a silly question at all. So when you think about um, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. owns Facebook. Um, he either wants to dominate or buy to dominate. He'll either create it or he'll buy it. Right. So he bought Instagram. Oh, okay. um, Instagram yeah. was rocking. 
Yeah. Instagram saw Snapchat was a thing and said, well, oh my gosh, this is popular. So what did they do? They duplicated Snapchat mm-hmm. and that's what Instagram stories are. Yeah, stories are doing so well that Facebook was like, well, let's have a Facebook story. Mm-hmm. So that's where Facebook stories, and they just kind of snuck them in. Okay. Um, they are different. They're a few seconds shorter. They don't have all of the engagement. Mm-hmm. The easiest thing that I recommend for people to do is just hook up your accounts for now, mm-hmm. at least tell your story on Instagram and it'll go straight over to Facebook. Yeah. And that's a good way to kind of start that interaction. Yeah. And is that okay to do that? Like you think that's not going to harm any, harm anything. It's just going to give you more content, more, more stuff. To give. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I really believe in meeting people where they are. And I realize, like with my target market with network marketers, they, most of them started their business thinking all they had to do was show the product. They didn't know they had to become a CEO. Mm-hmm. They didn't know they had to learn social media, all those things. And so okay. I, gauge that okay how much time are you going to put into your business Mm -hmm. all right if you if if it's the difference between you not posting anything and you posting something then if it's duplicate that's totally fine and they're definitely different i mean there's a crossover of people but there are definitely different people watching both of Mm -hmm. both of the stories for sure yeah like i feel like uh, i'm still like stuck on facebook because like i feel like there's so much more of a community on there but i think it's just because they haven't explored like the instagram way to build community over there like i like the facebook groups like so I feel like I'm, I'm just, I'm, but I know so many people are over there. It's just yeah. like, I got to go there, but I just thought, sure. like, I know I'm not only Facebook. <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> well, and because Facebook made so many changes over the last couple of years to really, in, to encourage community, it actually worked. And so there's a lot of community going on there and the Instagram doesn't have those capabilities, but you kind of, you not even kind of, you want to be at both places. Right. You do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, yeah. Okay. You that's, do. That's that's smart. Yes. Be yeah. in both places. Do both. Okay. And then the strategy behind Instagram for uh, growing our followers is like going in, like commenting on posts. Uh, like, because I know you're not supposed to follow more people than follow yeah, me. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't. Uh, all those things I think take way too much time. And if you're a podcaster, you're 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 podcasting for a reason, either because podcasting is your business or it's to feed into your business. So I say, don't worry about all those things. Work on your stories. Um, okay. Use hashtags. Two other things I want to tell you to do on your story. Okay. Use hashtags. Mm-hmm. And you can do up to 10 hashtags if you type them into the type feature. So okay. find the hashtags that where your clientele, where the people you want to watch or, and listen to your podcast are, and use those hashtags on your stories. Also use the geo tags. People, when you see the location sticker, people mm. don't use that enough. And what Instagram has done is if you say like, for example, I live in Irvine, California. So if I put Irvine on there, when I look at my analytics, I can see people that were shown my story because they follow Irvine, the hashtag Irvine. Mm. So it will get you in front of different okay. people. The hashtags will in the location tags. That's how you get more eyes. They like you on your story. It's like, okay, she's kind of cool. Oh, I like what she's got. And then they're going to look at your profile and then that, that leads to other things. So some things that you can do though, Michelle, that I think are really beneficial to promote your podcast on mm-hmm. Instagram um, is when, the, when it comes out weekly or when, how, whatever frequency you want to make sure you're announcing that in some way. Okay. I encourage announcing it with like whatever image you usually use on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also following up in a certain amount of days, what I do is I follow up typically, typically um, five days later with a snippet from my podcast since I, I do the video version of it as well too. Mm-hmm. So I upload that into IGTV. Mm-hmm. And so there's a video snippet that's like three, four minutes that brings like the one with you and I is reasons yeah. why people shouldn't start a podcast. Um, <laughs> and so that teases people that people watch that and, and Instagram does give deference. They say they don't, but they do. The more you play with Instagram, the better. So if you're doing Instagram stories and you're doing IGTV, the, that brings more people to it it exposes your profile to more people so they can find you on igtv see that snippet and you can have like to watch the full to the full episode or to listen to it Mm -hmm. click here okay and you can take them to your podcast so that's a great way to to encourage it too and podcast tip take them to the pod your podcast on your website don't take them to itunes you want that traffic. <laughs> that's very, that's very, very smart. I like yeah. that. The one thing I have started doing, I'll tell you is when I do IGTV, I'm like, well, they're watching it. So I'll give them an option of like, li- like the link to my page, mm-hmm. but then I'll also say, or you can watch it to my YouTube channel just YouTube, because yeah. if some people are watchers, I'll figure yeah. they'll go there. 
yeah, it is one of the top podcasting platforms anyways, YouTube, which is so weird. <laughs> I so weird. love that. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Roxanne. This has been so helpful uh, for me anyways, <laughs> hopefully for our audience yeah. as well. And uh, just giving us some great like nuggets in there. Um, how uh, We talked about your program earlier, but take us over there again. And uh, if you have anything for us over there, let us know where to go find you and follow you on Instagram. Absolutely. Thank you. So for my podcast, you can go to Rocks Talks Podcast. And then for, um, if you want to get more information on Instagram and Instagram tips, I do have an Instagram stories checklist that will help you what, what I discussed and forgive me. I'll make, I'll make some, a quick, I will make a quick link for you for that. So you have access to it. Or if you go to Rocks Talks Podcast, I'll definitely have that link, but I'll give those to you, Michelle, or you can go to socialstoriesmembership.com. Right. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on with us today. Hope to have you back again one day. And uh, yeah, until then, go follow Roxanne on Rock Talks and her, which is her Instagram handle. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, go check out her membership site and her stories uh, checklist. So thank you so much for being with us. Amplify you. Thank you for joining us in today. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much.